My name is Tim Versteinen. I'm the director of the Cognitive Axon Lab. It's in the Department of Psychology and the Center for the Neural Basis of Cognition here at CMU. So one of the things we're kind of hoping to do in the lab and we're working on right now is uh, releasing publicly available maps of the anatomical connections in the, the human brain, the normal healthy brain. With this information, you can do a lot of things. You can use them in educational resources to teach how the brain's wired together, teach neuroanatomical pathways in the brain. Uh, a lot of basic scientists are interested in this um, in terms of trying to understand whatever system they're looking at, visual system, auditory system, you name it. And then the other avenue of, of our research is really trying to under understand a very basic question about how the brain learns. How do we learn from uh, a moment-to-moment -moment experiences? And how do certain parts of the way that we're wired together make us better or worse at learning? Uh, you can understand individual differences in this learning ability if you understand the way the system is put together. And that's where we kind of hoping to push this the most. So right now what we're doing is we're using a uh, form of magnetic resonance imaging called diffusion weighted imaging to map out the physical connections in the human brain. And what we're looking at is the large superhighways that connect different areas together. And by mapping out these connections, what we essentially get is a wiring diagram of the human brain. Now, in the lab, what we're interested in is using this wiring diagram to understand how we make very basic decisions. We're also looking at how uh, a particular set of circuits of the brain called the cortical basal ganglia circuits allow for us to learn very complex skills. You acquire these skills over a very long time scale. So we're looking at this, this form of learning in the context of the organization and the neural circuits that are involved. And in particular, what we want to know is does little differences in the way that the circuits organized across individuals predict differences in the way that you say learn a melody in the piano or learn to make a decision about whether or not to engage in action. Uh, and we've identified in collaboration with colleagues here uh, a novel molecular mechanism that might explain how the environment and your social factors can actually impact little cells in your brain. And that's through something called the inflammatory pathways. Your body's inflammatory system is part of your immune system, and when you are chronically stressed, uh, when you're unhealthy, when you are smoke or you're physically obese, you increase the circulating inflammatory chemicals in your bloodstream. And what these do is they cross the blood-brain barrier and can induce little micro-inflammation in the brain, particularly around cells that protect these long-range connections in the brain. We might be biased towards individual abilities just because of the way we're wired together naturally, and we might be biased by our social environment or our health. Um, and we've proposed a new field called health neuroscience, which is specifically proposed to merge these ideas of health psychology with the tools and questions of cognitive neuroscience.